What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And here we are talking about the Guardian Druid. And man, oh man, what do we have here? Not only does it have the most selection on what kind of damage mitigation it wants to end up doing, but it also has the most health. And health is going to be very important in tanking in Legion. Absolutely amazing. The mastery is what gives it so much health. And we will go over all of this coming up real soon in the abilities. But this is just a very methodical creature it is very awesome and you do have some decent gameplay on this you also have to be pretty on top of where you're using your resources your rage is kind of limited in some situations so you really want to end up paying attention on what ability to end up using definitely a brain teaser and with this let's go ahead and move right into the abilities what's up ladies and gentlemen and here we are taking a look at the abilities and the very first one's going to be bark skin 1.5 minute cooldown. This has not changed very much from live. And what you're looking at is it's going to reduce all damage you take by 20% and preventing damage from delaying your spell cast. Lasts a total of 12 seconds and it's usable while stunned, frozen, incapacitated, feared, or asleep. Really a solid defensive cooldown and most of the specs get this one already. Bear form, we know this one. We're in bear form and what it's going to do is give you 30% increased stamina and 200% increased armor. Really, there's nothing different about this whatsoever. Same thing goes for cat form. 30% speed increase is the main thing I end up mentioning there. You have dash still. Instant. 3 minute cooldown. Activates cat form and increases your movement speed by 70% for 15 seconds. This is only in cat form though. So you can't end up hitting dash and then swapping back to bear. You've got to stay in cat form to increase this. Dreamwalk teleports a caster to the Emerald Dreamway. This is your new class order hall, the Emerald Dreamway, and it is absolutely amazing and probably one of the best looking order halls there is. Entangling Roots. Nothing's changed here, guys. You're just going to root the target in place. You're going to end up casting it. It does end up breaking you out, but as you can see, you're still going to put the roots up and it's going to stop anybody from running towards you. Frenzied Regeneration. Big changes. Big, big, big changes. No longer just a straight heal, but it is actually a methodical heal. You want to end up thinking about how this one gets played out, and it's just like Death Strike. The only difference with this ability from Death Strike is the fact that, one, it's on a longer recharge. It is not a spammable ability. It costs 10 rage, and it's going to heal you for 40% of all damage taken in the last 5 seconds over 3 seconds. The other main factor is... It's Death Strike that is actually a hot. Minimum 5% of your health. Very different on this ability, but it does play very nicely if you take a huge damaging hit. You can time this thing outright and end up helping the healer get you top back up. The reason why you want to end up playing into this we will go over in a few minutes, but it's due to your mastery and the fact that your hit points are going to be through the roof. Growl's still here. This is still your general taunt. Healing Touch, you still have this ability, it still plays in fairly decently, but it's not like it used to be. Very, very light heal, nothing great about this unless you just need to top off. Incapacitating Roar, 30 seconds, uh, 30 second cooldown, and really this isn't going to be doing too much. All enemies within 20 yards for 3 seconds are going to just be incapacitated, there's nothing big on this. Iron Fur, the first of your active mitigations and a very well played through ability. 45 Rage, high cost, increases armor by 75% for 6 seconds, multiple uses of this ability may overlap. So what that means is you can end up actually having two of this ability up at once. So if you have the 90 Rage you spend, instead of being 75%, you can have a 150% increased armor for that 6 seconds. And if you end up using one three seconds in, don't worry. That means three seconds you'll have 150% and then it'll drop down to 75 after it. It kind of doesn't, does exactly what it says. It overlaps, but as one falls off, it will fall off to that point. Does not refresh the time. Mangle, instant, 5.26 second cooldown. Mangle the target for X amount, deals 20% additional damage against bleeding targets. Main thing that you're going to use Mangle for is the rage generation as you can see very limited six rage not a lot going on with it mark of ursal 45 rage reduce the magic damage taken by 30 percent for six seconds this is your second act of mitigation and this is where your thought starts coming in is it physical damage i'm taking okay let's boost our armor is it 
magic damage I'm taking. Okay, let's boost our magical damage reduction, which is going to be through Mark of the Ursal. This is where it starts to get the mind going. Which one are you going to end up taking? Which mi mitigation are you going to take? Do you have the rage pulled up to do it? This is where it starts taking off is with this extra ability and we'll get it more into that during the gameplay. Maul's here. Maul is very weak. It's extremely weak. It almost feels like it's just there for a rage dump and with the way that the rage is built on the bear already it's not a very solid choice to end up using it. Very weird piece. Very capped for rage and I don't I never ended up using Maul. Not gonna lie. I, most of the dungeons I ran if I hit it it was out of fluke. Mighty Bash, Talent, Invokes the Spirit of Ursoc, Stunning. Well, we'll go over this a little bit later, but this is just a basic stun and a talent. Moonfire, yes, you can use this during bear form now, and it's very nice. It's instant, and it's just going to do a very light amount of arcane damage like normal, but there is some neat mechanics that play into this and your talents. Prowl still here, basically all this is going to do is just turn you into the cat and make you go stealth, so if you do need to sneak past something, which is hardly ever, you don't have to worry about it. Pulverize is still here as a talent, we'll go over that later. Rage of the Sleeper, this is going to be your artifact. Instant, 1.5 minute cooldown. Unleashes the Rage of Ursoc for 10 seconds, preventing 25% of all damage you take and reflecting nature damage back at your attackers. It's not the best artifact ability at all, but it does end up doing an overall 25% damage reduction, and it does some additional damage back. Not a lot, but it still plays out fairly well. Rebirth, it's still here. You still have a battle res. We're not going to go too far into that one. Regrowth is only here from a talent. Same thing with Rejuve. We'll go over those later. Of Corruption, this is just your basic D curse. It's going to remove all curse and poison effects on the target. Revive does exactly what it says. This is going to be your res, your non-combat res. Skull Bash is still your interrupt. It's still one of the better ones there is. It uh, still gives the charge mechanic. It is on a 13 yard range. Very nice to end up seeing this ability still. And the fact that you can end up interrupting from a longer range means you've got a little bit of additional mobility. Stampeding Roar is here. Instant. It says one minute cooldown, but that's actually reduced by a talent. Normally it would be a two minute cooldown. As we will show you right now. Where'd it go? Guttural Roars. Increase the radius of Stampeding Roar by 200% and the radius of Incapacitating Roar by 100% and reduce the cooldown of Stampeding Roar by 50%. So normally this would end up being a 2 minute cooldown, but due to the talent it has changed and it would be 15 yards instead of 30. Survival Instincts is going to be your first major cooldown. Now you'll see it says 4 minute recharge, that's because you have 2 charges of this. And it reduces all damage you take by 50% for 6 seconds. Max 2 charges, I just mentioned that. The way this thing works, the timing on this ability, if you do need to end up having a bit more damage reduction, this is awesome. All damage by 50% for 6 seconds. Timing this on major abilities is going to be absurd. And it's going to feel very nice throughout the whole entire fight. Just knowing that you can always end up having an additional charge of something, then you've got bark skin, and then all these other defensives you can still end up looking at. This just plays out well for an overall tank. Swift Mend. This is also through a talent we'll go over later. Swipe does exactly what it says. Physical damage on all nearby enemies. It's instant. It doesn't cost any rage. Doesn't give any rage. Just physical damage. So if you need to pick up incoming ads, this is a very spammy ability that's going to let you do it. Thrash. Instant, very low cooldown, and it can be reduced by haste. It's going to strike all nearby enemies, dealing some bleed damage, and then adding a dot on top of that for 15 seconds. When in bear form, this is also going to add up like the lacerate of the used to. So we'll look real quick. What you'll see is you'll end up getting the bleed. Very solid amount of damage coming off of this thing. And when it comes up, boom, there it is too. And this is going to be your lacerate mechanic. So instead of it being a different ability having lacerate it's tied in through thrash so thrash will be used quite often in a single target situation travel form 
does exactly what it says. This is going to turn you into whatever travel form you have available at the time. If you can fly, it's going to turn you into your bird. If it's ground only, it's going to turn you into the stag. Gore! Using Thrash, Swipe, or Moonfire has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown on Mangle and cause it to generate an additional 4 Rage. So instead of generating 6 Rage, it's going to generate 10 Rage. And you're really going to want to end up using Thrash, Swipe, and Moonfire as much as you possibly can in almost every situation. This is a very interesting piece, and we'll go over why in the talents. Mastery, Nature's Guardian. Increases your maximum health and healing received by 24%. It also has the attack power increase also, but what this is going to do is, Mastery is going to be super strong with this spec. And the reason for it, Higher health means higher chances of survivability on most of the content, especially the way that Legion seems to be going. And then increasing your healing that you received is going to also make it easier on your healers to heal that damage up. There's a lot that ties into your mastery, making it very, very solid. Up next is Thick Hide. Passive, reduce all damage taken by 10%. So overall, you just take a passive 10% reduction. Ysera's Gift, it's also a talented ability that we'll go over here in just a bit. And with this, let's go right into the talents. Alright, taking a look at these talents. Level 15, we're going to start off with a passive. And it's going to be Sharp Brambles Protect you, absorbing and reflecting up to a very small amount of damage from each attack. While Barkskin is active, the Brambles also deal X amount of additional damage to all nearby enemies every one second. It's just a passive but non-passive ability. You can end up using Bark Skin to increase some AoE or just help pick up some damage. And then you've also got this just natural absorption on every hit that ends up hitting you. It's kind of like adding a bit more armor in and then doing a little bit of additional damage. Almost like the old Thorns. That's basically what this is looking like is Thorns back in the day. Now you've got Bristling Fur. Instant, 40 second cooldown, bristle your fur causing you to generate rage based on damage taken for 8 seconds. If you feel like you're going to take a huge amount of damage, you can basically refill your rage generation by using this ability. Now it does have a 40 second cooldown, so it has to be timed quite well. Blood Frenzy, Thrash also generates 2 rage each time it deals damage. Now, this is a very solid rage build setup, not great but not bad at the same time but two additional rage every time that it does damage what you're looking at is this ends up doing damage over 15 seconds i want to say it's almost every two to three seconds that this is actually going to do something so you're looking at additional rage but this is going to be more beneficial in an aoe situation Guttural Roars, level 30. We kind of went over this in the abilities, but we'll go over it again. Increases the radius of Stampeding Roar by 200% and the radius of Incapacitating Roar by 100% and reduce the cooldown of Stampeding Roar by 50%. I use this mainly just to get through dungeons hella fast. That's the only reason why I took it. It was great for the group to end up moving, and it was pretty solid. Displacer Beast, instant. Works exactly the same as on live form. It's going to end up turning you into a cat, blinking you forward, increasing your movement speed by 50% for 4 seconds. Wild Charge, same as on live. What this is going to do in bear form is going to have you charge to an enemy. It's going to work just like a warrior charge, except it does not generate rage. Uh, 45, that's where we want to be. Increase the range of all your abilities by 5 yards. And then you've got damaging abilities. Not a lot really fit for Balance Affinity here, so we're going to move on to Feral Affinity. This may end up working if you're doing more off tanking and you need to end up swapping into a damaging role for a little bit. You can swap into Cat form and then back into Bear form, so on and so forth. That ends up fitting really well, but then you have Restoration Affinity. And heals you for 3% of your maximum health every 5 seconds. If you're at full health, at ran a random nearby injured ally will be healed instead. Doesn't seem like a whole hell of a lot, but 3% of your maximum health every 5 seconds, plus your mastery, which is increasing your total health pool, and then you've also got the mastery that's giving you an increased amount of healing. So, basically, this is going to be a very solid self-heal every 5 seconds, and if you're not taking that damage, and you're not really getting hurt too bad, 
this is going to end up helping someone else get healed for a very solid amount. 3% of your maximum health doesn't seem like a lot, but late game when you start getting into the 4 and 5 million health pools, this is going to play out extremely well later on also. Level 60, Mighty Bash. This is going to work the same as on live. 50 second cooldown and just stuns the target for 5 seconds. Mass Entanglement, no change here either. You're just going to root everything in place that's in the area. Typhoon. Works the same, 30 second cooldown, just going to knock back everything at 15 yards in front of you, and that's it. It's going to daze them for 6 seconds. 75, Soul of the Forest, Mango generates 5 more rage and deals 15% more damage, so single target, this is going to end up helping quite a bit more with rage generation. But it limits your abilities, and I'm going to go over why here in just a second. Incarnation. This is going to not really be too much different than what you have on live. It's going to be an improved bear form still that reduces the cooldown on all melee damage abilities and growl to 1.5 seconds and causes Mangle to hit up to three targets. Not a lot has changed with this ability. It's basically Berserk mixed in with Incarnation. Just a overall damage ability for you it lasts 30 seconds and you can still swap in and out of it while it's up this is just a damaging cooldown every three minutes that is all this really is going to turn into but you also can generate a ton of rage during it it's kind of a wax and wane depending on what you want to do and then you have galactic guardian it's passive your damage has a 10 percent chance to trigger a free automatic moonfire on on that target when this occurs the next moonfire you cast generates 15 rage so You'll see, let's just go ahead and just maybe do some attacks here. You'll see to where it procs and you'll see a Moonfire go down. I will not cast it right off the bat. Let's see if we can get this thing to proc. It normally procs quite a bit, so I'm not... Let's, there it is. Alright, so you see to where the Moonfire came down on its own. Oh, it actually came down on the other one due to my Thrash damage. So you can see to where this ends up happening. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to allow me to end up throwing Moonfire on another target and building 15 more Rage. It fits very well. You can end up having Moonfire up on quite a bit of different mobs just because of this ability. And it procs pretty damn well. Quite awesome on this ability. And then you can use that Moonfire and generate 15 Rage. A little more proc dependent, but it does make the gameplay a little bit more enjoyable than Soul of the Forest not having anything except additional rage genera generation. Level 90, Earth Warden, passive. Every 6 seconds you gain a charge of Earth Warden, reducing the damage of the next auto attack you take by 30%. Earth Warden may have up to 3 charges. What this is going to mean is you can build up to 3 charges and just not take any major damage from auto attacks. This is going to help in some bosses, Every six seconds having this passive just end up thrown back on you. This will end up helping out quite a bit as long as it's a physical ability. But currently in the five mans it just didn't feel like it fit. Guardian of a Loon. I enjoyed this one because it was something else to end up tracking. Uh, Mangle increases the duration of your next Iron Fur or Mark of Ursaw by two seconds. Or the healing of your next Frenzied Regeneration by 20%. Extra two seconds or additional 20%. This had a cool little gameplay to end up watching for survival of the fittest passive reduces the cooldown of bark skin and survival instincts by 33 percent this helped out a decent amount if you needed to be more cooldown specific if you needed these additional cooldowns to pop you back up this helped out a little bit level 100 rend and tear passive while in bear form thrash also increases your damage dealt to the target and reduces your damage taken from the target by two percent per application of thrash Again, this is an awesome passive. Very awesome. It's great for ad tanking, but it limits the flavor of the spec. It makes it to where it's very simple, very easy, and you can keep up a constant 6% damage reduction on all targets as long as you build up to that point. Shorter fights, not so much, and then you end up also doing additional damage. Again, damage reduction and damage, very solid choice. Probably will be the way to end up going, even though it is a little on the boring side lunar beam instant this is 
situational very situational summon a beam of lunar light at your location and deals arcane damage and heals you for a very good amount over eight seconds 1.5 minute cooldown so this is an additional amount of healing to help keep yourself up if you feel like you're really going to need some additional healing 193,000 almost 200k we're at 821,000 health really it's a decent amount of healing but it's not going to be life-saving at any point considering it's over eight seconds you're gonna get probably a fourth of that every two seconds and it can end up helping out decently but i didn't see it being very great and then you have it looks awesome though hold on let wait, give me one second here it looks hella awesome here you have it there's your lunar beam it lands right on top of you and you can see health wise 48,000, 24, 130s. So it does a decent amount and it looks pretty cool, but it's almost like a 1.5 minute consecrate that ends up doing some healing to you. That's about all it is. Pulverize. This was my choice. This was my choice item in most situations. And it added a lot of gameplay flavor and it just made it really fun. So, what's it gonna do? It's a devastating blow that consumes two stacks of your thrash. Not a lot different than what's on live, guys, um, it, except it's doing the thrash stacks instead of lacerate, and it does a decent amount of physical damage, but it also reduces all damage you take by 8% for 20 seconds. And being a tank, the main thing you're looking at is maximum damage reduction in most situations. You can go with the additional damage here and lose 2%, but this 8% is, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it'll stack up over time. And every 20 seconds is all you have to worry about with refreshing this. If you want to refresh it sooner, if you've got, let's say, an ad that comes in, it's about ready to die, and you've got the two stacks, you can refresh this thing just before it ends up dying, and you aren't going to have to worry about the additional damage from Thrash or anything else going off of it. But Pulverize fit my gameplay quite nicely, and I enjoyed it. So speaking of gameplay, we'll get to that here in a few minutes, but right now, let's take a look at the artifact. Alright, so we're looking at the skins, and the skins involve actually changing what flavor of bear ass you want to look at. And I say bear ass because it's a bear, and it's showing its ass all the damn time. That's what you're looking at. First off, let's look at the Warlords of Draenor bear. Here it is, we're looking at it. What makes this thing so damn special? Not a lot, they did do some updates, gave him the earrings, gave him some flair, and now we have this. More bear ass. You see the bear ass? I see the bear ass. So we have the bear ass that is here. Honestly, the armor. The addition to the armor. The tattoos. All this different stuff looks really damn good in just about every skin. Even on the base model. And then you go into stuff like this. Stonepaw. When you're a rocky bear. Uh, yogis around the world are going to enjoy playing with these skins. They look really damn good between the tattoos or tagging, whatever the hell that's supposed to be. He's been hit by uh, graffiti down in Chicago or something. But the way that this plays out, these specs look really damn good. And we're going to let it spin around so we can look at less bare ass and more bare model. So, here we are. And it looks good. It looks really good. And then Avatar of Ursul. This is going to take the marking or the look of Ursol and just give you a bunch of different color schemes. It's a dangerous look all the way through and through. And then your PvP set, Fall into Nightmare. Just, this is a gorgeous change that we've needed on bear models for a long time. Same thing goes with the cat. Hopefully, eventually, they'll do something with the Boomkins because, I'm sorry, Boomkins, they really suck on the way that they end up looking. Now... All the way through and through, this has got some very good looking appearances to the skin that you end up choosing. Love the hell out of this. It does not show the weapon changes, which I don't think it ends up changing it too much, just the skin itself. Very enjoyable, guys. Enjoyable to all means, and there's still a few of them that are hidden in there that we'll find out about later. Uh, probably one that turns you more into a tree, kind of like the cat. But who knows? We'll find about, out about that a bit later whenever it comes live and we get to dig deep into it. So with this, let's go ahead and take a look at the traits. Alright, we're going to look at the traits and I'm going to let you uh, keep staring at some bear ass over to the side here.
But what we're looking at is Rage of the Sleeper. We went over this once already in the abilities, but what's it going to do? It's going to prevent 25% of all damage you take and reflect damage back to anyone that attacks you for the next 10 seconds. 1.5 minute cooldown. It's not the greatest artifact ability on the planet, but it's got a decent amount of damage reduction. First thing out though is increase your armor by 5% from armor or iron claws. Increases armor by 5%. Heavy amounts of health, increased armor. Uh, yeah, okay. This is an overall badass tank as they just get really damn good and buffed all the way through and through. Vicious Bites is the first or next ability that I ended up going through, and what it's going to do is increase damage dealt by Mangle by 5, 10, or 15%, so some extra damage on top of this tank. Bear Hug, increase the chance to trigger Gore by 5%, and if you didn't remember, Gore is actually what's going to reset your Mangle through certain abilities. Sharpened Instincts, rank 0 to 3. Survival Instincts reduces all damage you take by an additional 3, 6, or 10%. Ursox Endurance, rank 0 3, increase the duration of Bark Skin, Iron Fur, and Mark of Ursol by 0.5 seconds, and it's going to be 0.5, 1, or 1.5. Doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a decent amount of time in, a, in any fight whenever you're looking at reducing damage. It kind of gives you a little bit more of a window to play with instead of having to be spot on. Gory Fur, rank 0 1. Mangle has a 15% chance to reduce the rage cost of your next Iron Fur or Mark of Ursol by 50%. There's no cooldowns, there's no recharges on these abilities, so basically this is just going to tell you, hey, you can hit this ability now and save yourself some trouble or save yourself some rage. Adaptive Fur, rank 0 of 1. Taking elemental damage has a chance to grant you 10% damage reduction for 15 seconds against the elementals or elements that cause the damage. So this is a great way to end up adjusting to each fight there's not a lot going on the longer the fight ends up going the better this is going to end up feeling but really this is going to be for a magic damage situation only reinforced fur rank 0 3 passive iron fur increases armor by an additional 4 8 or 12 percent wild flesh rank 0 3 increases healing done by frenzied regeneration by 5 10 or 15 percent again this is just with the change to Frenzied Regen and it having a charge system and acting like Death Strike, this is going to work out pretty well because that's going to give it a, instead of being 40%, it's going to be 45, 50, and 55% of damage done over X amount of time. It's going to just help out in the long run with personalized healing. Perpetual Spring, rank 0 3, reduce the cooldown of Bark Skin by 3%. This is going to be 3, 6, or 10%. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Bloody Paws, rank 0, 1. Thrash reduces the movement speed of its targets by 50% for 6 seconds. So, nothing's going to run away from you quickly anyways. Jagged Claws, rank 0, 3. Increases damage dealt by Thrash by 5, 10, or 15%. Not bad on this one either. Just a little bit more damage. Always plays out well. Bestial Fortitude. Increased stamina by 1, 2, or 3%. I do have this with some artifact in there, but more stamina on top of what your health pool is already at through your mastery. It's just insane. I mean, you're going to be... End of this expansion will probably be hitting close to 8 million health or something. It's going to be ridiculous. Mauler. Increases the critical strike chance of Maul by 3, 6, or 10%. Again, Maul didn't seem too important on the priority list. It was by far just there if you needed a rage dump. If you wanted to dump your rage on a di little bit, very little additional damage, that was going to be the way to do it. Embrace of the Nightmare. While Rage of the Sleeper is active, you deal 25% increased damage, gain 25% increased leech, and are immune to all effects that cause loss of control of your character. This is where... Rage of the Sleeper actually gets its cooldown usage. This here is very minimal. 25% damage reduction and then re damage reflection. It's it's not a whole hell of a lot going on. But when you add this ability in and it increases your damage also and gives you leech, it becomes an extremely strong cooldown on a 1.5 minute. Every 1.5 minutes, 
this isn't worth it on its own but once you get this it's going to be extremely solid roar of the crowd rank zero one stampeding roar increases your movement speed by an additional five percent per ally hit up to a maximum of 25 percent so if you hit five allies you can move faster than everyone else and make sure you still get to the mobs before they do We've actually completed out the artifact, woohoo! And with this, let's go ahead and talk about what everybody wants to talk about, and that's going to be the gameplay. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the Guardian Druid and the gameplay that we're going to get into. Holy crap. Yogi the Bear would be proud of these spec changes. This has done some pretty insane differences, and what, what are they? What has this thing gotten? What can it bring to a raid or generalized PV envi environment? And the answer is everything it can bring everything from solid damage reduction to okay i need to be more of a physical damage reducer and i can do this through iron fur increase my armor by up to 150 percent if i damn well please and i have the rage or we can use mark of ursal and we can reduce the magical damage taken by 30 percent very solid active mitigation choices and i say choices because damn they are good and you can continue with a lot of these different choices if you end up going with like pulverize into your abilities or you know you can end up getting rid of a little bit of ticking damage from your thrash slash lacerate stacks and use pulverize and just reduce all damage you take for eight percent for another 20 seconds solid overall damage mitigation through and through even before you touch a cooldown with your cooldowns you have two charges of survival instincts each one on a four minute recharge what what is this Reduces all damage you take by 50% for 6 seconds? And you have 2 charges of this? So if you're in a blister mode, let's say a berserk or in rage on a boss fight, you can back to back these on larger swings or larger hits and survive just about anything if you've got a good timed mentality. Very solid on there. And then you have bark skin. Eh, bark skin's bark skin, guys. There's not a lot that's changed with it. It's just a 20% damage reduction but it does last 12 seconds so you can really smooth out additional periods just a little more incapacitating roar still there no one cares uh then you've got rage of the sleeper your artifact ability we've gone over this time and time again this thing just does a normal damage reduction 25 percent reduction and a a reflect come on that's crap but the good part is and once you do upgrade it it becomes a very solid leech ability so now that we got those cooldowns up and out of the way, what are we looking at gameplay wise with this? It's a very structured and not a hit whatever is up kind of spec. Well, in a way it is. Thrash is going to be probably the leading ability that you're going to want to always keep on cooldown. Same thing ends up going with Mangle. You want to keep these on cooldown for the simple fact they're going to be your main rage generation. Thrash generates four rage. And then you've got Mangle that generates 6, with a chance of generating 10 depending on procs. You're constantly thinking of what to end up using with this spec. And depending on how you spec, it's going to affect your dynamics completely. As for me, I went Galactic Guardian, so Moonfire is now part of my rotation. I also went Pulverize. Pulverize is now part of my rotation. But they're timed. You want to make sure you're using Pulverize correctly just to end up refreshing your damage reduction. Or you can use it to end up doing a little bit more damage, but is it going to beat out the dot that's on there? A little bit of thinking here or there. Do I want to use it? How much health's left on the mob? Is it going to end up dying soon? Then hell yeah, we want to use it and refresh. Because there's no point in keeping a dot up that's going to last X amount of time on something that's going to be dead. But if you can end up refreshing, you can kind of see where I'm going with this on the actual explanation of where you want to think. There's a, so much to think about with this spec. You've got Thrash, you've got all this, that, the other. AoE out the butthole thanks to Swipe. Just being an instant, doesn't cost anything. Great damage. So this thing has good damage output. It has great mitigation. It has the highest health out of all tanks and can be healed for more than any other tank. Where is anything going wrong with this spec? And there's nothing really. The only thing that's really bad about it, and I can understand why they did it, was Maul, it costs 20 rage, it does very little damage, and the only reason this ability is up here is just like tanks like Prot Warriors that have your focused rage, focused in rage, where you're dumping 
rage. If you get to that point to where you're making too much rage or you've got too much rage generation going on, it's a place to dump it instead of just doing it on another damage reduction. So you can balance also with Maul. Interesting gameplay out of this. Lots of different fun. Lots of self-healing. Overall, this tank just automatically doesn't give a shit on what's coming at it because it's got a counter to everything. Just like the Prot Warrior, except this can actually heal itself. With Frenzied Regeneration being just like Death Strike on a Death Knight, even though this has charges and a very long recharge time, it can be reduced by haste. But you can heal yourself for so much through this. And then if you ended up taking a uh, Ysera, really, there's nothing stopping this tank from doing itself its own benefit. With this, let's go ahead and move on to the logs to see what's going on with this spec from a log perspective. Because the gameplay itself is fantastic. Alright, so here we are taking a look at what damaging abilities end up doing what on the bear tank itself. Melee is by far the top. And again, I want a haste or a mastery haste build for the reduction in cooldowns to help generate a bit more rage through my abilities and my actual melee attacks. Mangle itself, right behind it. Moonfire, not far at all. As you can see, the ticks on it don't do a lot, but you... At a 99% uptime, this thing was up all the damn time, and with Galactic Guardian, it does some pretty solid damage. Each application, cast 7 times, not a whole hell of a lot going on there. Then the Moonfire ticks, pretty decent. Thrash, again, it's got a fairly long cooldown, but with the reduction through haste, it helps out. Overall, damage is just there. I mean, it's not bad at all. It's smooth, everything's great. Swipe. It's in there also. Thrash. Now this is the dot off Thrash. Not high at all. Period. There's not a lot going on with the actual Thrash dot. But it was up almost 95% of the time. Pulverize. Again, this is not here for damage. This is here to apply the damage reduction. 8% damage reduction every 20 seconds. So you'll see... Pulverize right in this general area at the start. Let me see if I can find it. You probably won't even see it because oh, there it is in the gray. So here's Pulverize. Once I got built up, I was able to use it. And then you'll see me use it again 20 seconds later and then 20 seconds later. Just to make sure I keep that damage reduction up. Now damage taken. Melee, very low. Had a lot of them end up missing me because uh, dodge percentage is still up there. But overall, damage taken. If you look, yes I did end up taking most of the damage, but if you look at the healing, not a lot. Not a lot of healing was going in my direction. And we'll look at just me. Now, Frenzied Regen, if it's well timed you can end up doing a good amount. Right through here you can see where I got hit and then I started using Frenzied Regen. Go back to healing maybe there it is so this is what you're looking at you Sarah's gift it's gonna be in the gray all right and that's gonna be what heals me and then what heals somebody else on the other one now this is Sarah's gift as you can see every single time it ended up hitting was about 13,000 not bad not bad at all but just a solid every five seconds heal now nature's guardian if you end up looking this is what ends up this is your mastery it increases your maximum health and healing received by x amount it says eight percent but it's actually up quite a bit because i did go a mastery build but that's just a general tooltip so as you're being healed by somebody else this is also accumulating on you as your own, own personal healing i didn't take a lot of damage for it to end up adding up as you can see here's some of it and that's just if you look at the actual resources, that's where I took a little bit of damage, got some additional healing, but it helped heal me up itself. There's only very minimal places where I took damage. So, where are we at? We're back on healing. Dun da da da. Nature's Guardian, Frenzy, Regen, Brambles. Brambles is the uh, damage reflected, and as you can see, that reflected almost 59k over 1.25 minutes. Not a lot, but hey. 
31 reductions in damage. That's not bad. And then Ysera's Gift. This was a heal on the other. Now, Rage is another place we've got to look. Mangle and Thrash. This is where we ended up getting our Rage from. This is all we end up getting our Rage from. Mangle, Thrash, and then Moonfire was my other ability. And this is one of the reasons why I took it. You do have ways of making Thrash do more. But Moonfire is not far behind Mangle, which is your main generator. This is why I'm saying Mastery Haste. Getting the reduction on these abilities. Normally a 6 second cooldown. On my bar, it is sitting at a 5.26 second cooldown. So getting these to where you can actually reduce the amount of time it takes between these with haste is going to help out quite a bit on how much you actually generate very solid abilities all the way through and through and then this is just based on a proc depending on whatever you end up doing in, in da damage all in all can't say there's too much bad about this we're gonna look at Dressarian because now again mangle thrash you'll, you'll end up seeing a big difference moonfire I didn't get as many procs but we're going to look at damage done because, again, you've got adds that come out in these fights. Damage started off really high because someone pulled a bunch of slimes right at the beginning and then we ended up getting a bunch of dragon whelps. So you can see where the damage really takes off and swipe does a ton of damage. Same thing with thrash in an AoE situation. This is spammable. By all means, use it while it's off cooldown. Again, nothing for uh, any other additional damage, but then melee is right there. Mangles, not far behind. Moonfire, Brambles, you can see it all. Brambles, the more mobs that are out, are, it's going to obviously end up moving up more, and it's also going to move up on the healing side. Damage taken, mainly melee. Took one breath of corruption, but you can't really end up seeing it too much, because, uh, where is it at? Doo -doo -doo. Breath of corruption, it's the green. Not a lot going on there. So, all in all, Blood Bomb, Downdraft, Earth Shaking Roar. This is because we ended up pulling right into the boss and it ended up... I'm going to guess the log might have messed up on this fight. But all in all, not a lot going on because I don't remember taking any Breath of Corruption damage. But I might have still been... Might be like one single tick that I took before I moved out. But... As you can see, Breath of Corruption, still not a lot going on. And then you've got healing, personal healing, Ysera's Gift, all the way through the roof. Nature's Guardian, which is again our mastery. Brambles did a lot of additional damage absorption for us. Where was the health at? Really? Not a lot going on. Very fun, very insane amount of healing that you can end up getting out of this thing. It doesn't seem like a whole hell of a lot, but when you look at it in comparison, YJ was way up, but the reason for that, it was just a ton of additional healing. He was healing himself. Fun fight. All the way through and through, just a fun spec. Everything's pretty solid. Defensive buffs, you can end up seeing where they're at. Rage of the Sleeper, where they were used, but there's not a lot that was really going on for me. Let me pull this down. Mangle procs, you can see how often that actually procs. It's not too great, but it does end up doing pretty well. Uh, exquisite profic proficiency is actually an ability uh, or a trinket. Then you've got defensives, pulverize, kept that up as much as I possibly could. Iron fur, rage of the sleeper, misdirect, mark reversal. There's not a lot of additional damage going out, but you can see where I was actually using the padding. Frenzied Regen, once at the very end. Galactic Guardian, again, as I mentioned, 30 procs off of this. It procs all the damn time. It's just a lot of additional rage. So with this, I hope it ended up helping you out. There's a huge chunk and a lot more that I could go over with this spec. All in all, this spec is just overpowered as shit right now. It feels like it, and a lot of it has to do with the new mastery. The mastery increasing both your hit points and increasing the amount of healing you end up getting. That mastery is going to be brutal in this expansion. And it's going to play out very nice, at least at the very beginning. I don't know how it'll end up doing towards the end game. But currently, 
very solid tank lots of choices lots of things to end up going through and with this guys i hope you got the information you needed and as always thanks for watching